Generally, the evening wear in Chanel's comeback years was quite different from the early years. Chanel's new cocktail suits maintained the style of her fashionable cardigan suits, but they were fabricated in brocades, lames, and damask. This suit from spring-summer 1960 is fabricated in silk damask and chiffon. At first glance, the jacket looks boxy. When you look more closely, you can see that it skims a figure with a slight indentation at the waist. This classic cardigan jacket has bound or fabric buttonholes in a contrast fabric. All edges are trimmed with a double row of piping. The pocket design and double row of piping were also used on a mohair wool suit I have in my collection. The piping is made by hand. Notice the similarities and differences on the pocket details. This ensemble is from spring-summer 1964. The dress and jacket are lame, cloquet, and silk gauze. The jacket edges have a narrow gold piping. Look closely and you can see a bound buttonhole on the bodice. It has an attractive asymmetrical overskirt. From autumn winter 1962, this suit is silk lame and ottoman. Notice the lap on the sleeve is the back over front. From 1964, the fabric is lame, cloquet, and silk gauze. The jacket has a stand collar and three-quarter length sleeve. The jacket is trimmed on all edges and at the waist with the lime green piping. At the front edges, the selvages are used as part of the trim. On the collar, you can see how the lining folds back to make a piped trim. The same trim is used on the front edges and hem. This dress suit from Autumn Winter 1963 is similar to one in my collection. The fabric is suspense, lame by Bucal and silk taffeta. The dress bodice is cut on the bias. The jacket has a French seam from the shoulder and two gold fabric buttonholes. The dress is trimmed with gold soutache. This is a photo of the suit in my collection. I did YouTube videos about the jacket and dress separately and will include links at the end of this video. This stunning suit is from Autumn Winter, 1970. It is made of tulle embroidered with silk thread and silk crepe. The suit has an overskirt with a deep pleat on the right side. Here is a detail of the fabric. Isn't it magnificent? This suit is from spring summer 1965. It is linen canvas and silk satin with sequins, mother of pearl, and gilded metal embroidery. The skirt laps left over right and fastens with three buttons. From spring summer 1970, this dress is crocheted using a soft wool blended with Lurex. Lurex is a synthetic metallic yarn invented in 1946. The fabric is soft, lightweight, flexible, and inexpensive. Perhaps inspired by the American designer Man Boucher, who embellished designs with brooches and necklaces as early as 1947, this stunning cut glass necklace is stitched to the garment 
You can see the Lurex in the fabric easily in this photograph. From Autumn Winter, 1957, this skirt suit is lame, trimmed with wool and gold-colored braid. The jacket has a notch collar and unusual sleeve cuffs. From Spring Summer, 1971, this suit is fabricated in silk brocade and pongee. The jacket has four pockets and a stand collar. The suit has knife pleated skirt. Notice the interesting hem on the blouse. This ensemble from Autumn Winter 1957 is silk brocade, lame, lurex braid, shantung, and silk pongee. This ensemble is quite different from the others in this gallery. The jacket has a turned down collar and no trim at the edges. These details show the unusual seaming and the use of the fabric. From Autumn Winter, 1967, this ensemble is fabricated in silk brocade and wool jersey. The jacket has a notch collar and fastens with a single button and fabric buttonhole. The dress also has fabric buttonholes. From the early 1960s, this two-piece dress is made of silk, sequins, and beads. Bead fringes are sewn at the hemline, blouse, and skirt hem. The overlap of the skirt is shortened so that you can see the bead fringe on both skirt layers easily. This detail shows the fabric and bead fringe on the blouse. The dress belonged to Marlena Dietrich, who is notorious for removing the labels in her garments. She carefully saved the labels, and several are in the collection of the Deutsche Kinematik Museum in Berlin. That's the film museum. From spring summer, 1968, this tunic and shorts are made of lame and braid. Notice the pattern match at center front. The tunic has a stand collar. All edges of the tunic and shorts are trimmed with gold piping. From spring summer 1962, this ensemble is silk brocade and lame. The fuchsia silk on the neckline, pockets, and belt is an attractive contrast to the gold fabric. This jacket has a stand collar and bound or fabric buttonholes. Isn't the silk brocade a stunning fabric? From Autumn Winter, 1967, this suit is made of silk brocade and taffeta. The dress has a taffeta bow at the neckline and two flared tiered skirts with taffeta bands at the hems. Here you can see the bow and the fabric pattern. This ensemble from Autumn Winter 1962 is silk and lame. The classic cardigan jacket has no collar. All edges are trimmed with a black braid and fuchsia piping. Notice the design of the bodice. At the center front, the V-shaped inset is cut on grain. The two side panels are cut on the bias. The dress has a dropped waist with a tie at the waist. In this detail, you can see the trims on the jacket. 
Here is the detail of this handsome fabric. This elegant suit is from Autumn Winter, 1968. It is silk brocade, chiffon, and pongee. The jacket is trimmed with the wide gilt braid. Here is a detail of the fabric. From Autumn Winter, 1960, this suit is silk brocade and pongee. Sadly, this is a very poor photo, but the suit is so different from the others that I decided to include it anyway. The jacket has a large turned down collar and the skirt is pleated. The fabric speaks for itself and there are no added trims. Here is a detail of the fabric. Look closely and you can see the Indian motifs. From spring, summer, 1961, this dress is silk chiffon and taffeta. It was worn by Delphine Serig in the movie Last Year at Marion Bad. This dress was from the Haute Couture collection, not designed especially for the film. This exhibition at the Victorian Albert Museum in London is a very large ex exhibition. It explores Chanel's pioneering approach to fashion and it paved the way for a new feminine elegance and continues to influence the way women dress today. I've made several YouTubes about this particular exhibition, which I think you will enjoy and a couple about garments in my own collection, which have similar designs in the exhibition. I'm Claire Schaefer. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and join my channel.